Hello and welcome back, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very interesting antiderivative problem. Now I normally don't do antiderivatives or indefinite integrals, but this one is pretty cool. It looks very interesting with square roots and nested square roots as well, so I decided to give this a shot for a change. So we have the integral of dx divided by root x times the square root of x squared plus 1 times root x plus root x squared plus 1. So let's try a simplifying substitution because it looks like a tangent substitution would look pretty good here. So if I let x equal the tangent of theta, this implies that dx equals secant square theta d theta. And this implies that i is now the integral of secant square theta d theta divided by root tangent theta times root tangent square theta plus 1. And tangent square theta plus 1 is just the squared secant function, so we have secant square theta times tangent theta plus, again, root secant square theta. So we have some cancellation of roots here, as well as the cancellation of an entire secant term upstairs in the numerator. So this implies that i equals the integral of secant theta d theta divided by root tangent theta times root tangent theta plus secant theta. Okay, cool. Now let's expand the secants and tangents in terms of sines and cosines. So that means we have the integral of 1 by cosine theta d theta divided by sine theta times what exactly would we, ha what would we have in this tangent plus secant thing. Tangent is sine over cosine, secant is 1 over cosine, so that means we have sine theta plus 1 divided by cosine square theta, all in the square root. And again, we see some nice cancellation taking place. And this implies that the integral i is just the integral of d theta divided by root sine theta times root 1 plus sine theta. What we can do now is expand the sine functions using the double angle formulae. So I have the integral of d theta divided by root. Sine theta can be expanded as 2 sine theta by 2 times cosine theta by 2. And we also have this 1 plus 2 sine theta by 2 times cosine theta by 2 term. And now, as I often like to do with trigonometric integrals, is expand using the squared secant function. Because that normally does something pretty cool. So I have secant square theta by 2 upstairs, and secant square theta by 2 is the square of the square root of secant square theta by 2, right? So I could write down here a term root secant square theta by 2 times, now we could just write this 1 by root 2 outside because it's a constant multiple anyway, and we have sine theta by 2 times cosine theta by 2. And the other half of this root secant square theta by 2 squared would be here. So I have again roots, uh, root secant square theta by 2. I was about to say squeakant. That would be an interesting trigonometric ratio. The squeakant of theta, whatever that could be. Comment down below how could we define such a new exotic trigonometric ratio which we obviously do not need. Anyway, so we have 1 plus, again, 2 sine theta by 2 times cosine theta by 2. Terribly sorry about that. Uh, much better. Now, secant squared times cosine is secant, and sine times secant is tangent. So that means we have 1 by root 2 integral secant squared theta by 2 divided by tangent theta by 2, root tangent theta by 2, that is, times, what do we have here? We would have secant square theta by 2 plus 2 times the tangent of theta by 2. 
Now let's expand the secant squared term here as one plus tangent squared. And of course we're integrating with respect to theta. So we have one by root two times the integral of secant squared theta by two divided by root tangent theta by two times root secant squared is one plus tangent squared. So I can write this as tangent squared theta by two plus two times tangent theta by two. And we also have a plus one here. And this thing here, which I'm highlighting in orange, just boxing in orange, this thing would be equal to root tangent theta by two plus one squared, where we have some cancellation. So we have tangent theta by two plus one. So this implies that I equals one by root two times the integral of secant squared theta by two divided by tangent theta by two plus one times root tangent by, uh, tangent theta by two d theta. And now for another substitution, we're gonna let tangent theta by two equal u. And this implies the one half of secant squared theta by two d theta equals du. That looked very weird and much better now. Okay, cool. So this implies that i here needs an extra factor of two so we can have a factor of one half as the integrand, inside the integrand that is. So we have two by root two, which is of course root two times the integral of du divided by root u times u plus one. And another simplifying substitution can be made here. We're gonna let root u equal v, and this implies that one by two root u du equals dv. So that means we could use a couple of extra twos here, and this implies that i equals two root two times the integral of dv divided by v squared plus one which we of course recognize as the inverse tangent. So we have two root two times the inverse tangent of V plus a constant of integration C. And we're not done yet because, well, this is an indefinite integral. So we need to work our way back into the X world, starting with the V world that we're in right now. So the V variable was defined as root U and U is defined as tangent theta by two. And what exactly was theta. Well, x was tangent theta, so that means theta is the inverse tangent of x. So that means we have root tangent inverse tangent x by two. So this implies that the target integral i is two times root two times the inverse tangent of root tangent inverse tangent x by two plus a constant of integration c, which is one of the coolest forms for, for an antiderivative I've ever seen. But we could actually simplify this quite nicely. So let's start off with letting the inverse tangent of x be some angle alpha. Well, this would imply that the tangent of alpha equals x, or x by one, as in, in the right angle triangle, we have a perpendicular of x and a base length of one. So in the triangle, oh, quite nice. So in the triangle, we have this acute angle of alpha and a perpendicular of x and a base of one. And I'm interested in the tangent of the inverse tangent of x by two. This is interesting. This is interesting. Basically, what I what I would like here is the tangent of alpha by two in terms of x. So tangent alpha can be expanded as tangent alpha by two plus alpha by two, and this here equals x. And now we can use the tangent alpha plus beta formula, which is tangent alpha by two plus tangent alpha by two divided by one minus tangent alpha by two times tangent alpha by two. This here equals x. And this implies that x here equals two times tangent alpha by two 
divided by one minus tangent square alpha by two. So if I expand by one minus tangent square alpha by two, I would get x minus x times tangent square alpha by two equal to two times tangent alpha by two. And on rearranging, we indeed have a quadratic equation in tangent square in tangent alpha by two. So we have x times tangent square alpha by two plus two times tangent alpha by two minus x equal to zero. And we can solve this using, using the quadratic formula. So we have tangent alpha by two equal to negative two plus or minus four minus, no wait, plus four x squared divided by two x, which equals, well, you we can factor out a two there. So we have negative one plus or minus root one plus x squared divided by x. And we only need the positive square root here. So this implies that the tangent of alpha by two equals negative one plus root one plus x squared divided by x. And this implies, what exactly was alpha? Alpha here equaled the inverse tangent of x. So that means we have the tangent of the inverse tangent of x by two. This sorts out to negative one plus root one plus x squared divided by x. And that means all we have to do is return back to our antiderivative. Okay, so yeah, we have exactly this thing in the square root, and we just have to take the inverse tangent of it, multiplied by two root two. Okay, sounds good. So this implies that the target integral i sorts out to two times root two times the inverse tangent of root root one plus x squared. The integral was indeed quite rootful. Minus one divided by x plus a constant of integration c. That was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram as well. And in case you like the channel, you feel like you're learning something and you know want to support my work, you can support me on Patreon. All links are given in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.